Hello, I'm Ben Canty from the University of Virginia, and I'm working in Dr. Yuri Roman's lab on Project Lignin. And on a daily basis, what I do in lab is I set up a chemical reaction in a reactor such as this one right here. And I monitor it throughout the day to make sure everything's running smoothly. Ben's project is mainly focused on biomass conversion. So we look at biomass conversion broadly as a substitute to non-renewable sources of fuels and chemicals such as petroleum, coal, or something like that. Specifically, what we're looking at is conversion of lignin, which is one of the three main components of biomass, which is a primarily aromatic polymer. We do upfront processing to extract it from wood, and we produce a lot of carbon-carbon linked species. Ben's research focuses on breaking all those carbon-carbon linkages with cobalt catalysts. What I do each day is I load a reactor with some chemicals similar to lignin, and I put some cobalt catalyst inside a catalyst being a chemical substance which makes the reaction happen more easily. So we use a lot of different varieties of biomass from trees to agricultural waste. This is about a kilogram of ground up corn stalk which uh, was milled down to about two millimeters and then we turn this into bio oil which looks something like that at the bottom of this flask after a reaction. And then Ben's job is to take this oil and convert it into useful chemicals and fuels. So once we're done with the reaction, we'll take a sample and we'll put it on this machine here called a gas chromatograph with mass spectrometer. The gas chromatograph tells us pretty much how much products we made and can separate them. And then the mass spectrometer tells us what each of those products is. So we can see if the reaction is creating the compounds we want it to create. We have to be really careful when we're analyzing the GCMS spectra from these runs because it makes such a wide variety of compounds, but you want to think critically about what could have been possibly made based on what we started with and what reactions are, are going to be happening in the system. So here we have a spectrum and we have all of these peaks corresponding to all of the products that you made. So now if I zoom in on a certain peak, then I can analyze what product that peak is. But now we have to be really careful because this program will tell you it's a certain thing, but we need to think about the chemistry of our reaction and make sure that based on the compounds that we're putting in and the reactions that are occurring, that this product is actually something that could be made. So this is a good example of a ring that would not be formed in our reaction. So if I scroll through here, I can maybe find one that is much more probable, like this propyl cyclohexanol, which is really similar to the starting compound that we used. One exciting thing is that while I've been here, I've actually been able to find reaction conditions that produce some of the products that we want to create. For example, if I look at this peak right here, I can see that I actually generate a chemical called toluene. It has almost all the carbon bonds broken.